Hey, thanks for tuning in. In this video, I will explain you how to best collaborate on an Unreal Engine project. This video will be about source control. I will explain how it works under the hood, so it's not really black magic for you. And of course, it makes sense to understand this because you want to know what is happening with your files. So let's start with the first thing. Why can't you use Dropbox, Google Drive or NAS to work together on an Unreal Engine project? And there are basically two reasons for that. Reason number one is that incremental save don't work with Unreal Engine. So it's not like with Blender that you have a document file where you, for example, can link other blend files to it, where you can also save incrementally to version your work. In Unreal Engine, it does not work that way. You have a set of files, which is basically the internal structure of a project, which are a lot of new assets. And when you import, for example, an FBX, it gets converted to that file structure. So you are not linking an FBX, you are importing and converting it automatically. So for example, assets, they consist of multiple new assets for shaders, for meshes, and so on. And this file only exists once, so only the latest version exists in that case. And this is also not how Unreal only is working, this is also how every game engine works and how programming basically works. And then you come to the problem what Dropbox and all these tools provide because they sync instantly and because you don't have any kind of incremental save, let's say you both work on a map or you both work on an asset, you're constantly overwriting each other. And the only way to prevent that would be either to disable automatic sync and sync manually, maybe by using an FTP or something like that, and then also talk to each other, which file is currently modified. And this is definitely not practical um, in a production environment. So this is where source control comes into play. It exactly solves that problem what you mentioned before. Treat it like a kind of a system or a kind of a software, and it basically replaces your incremental savings, because that's the versioning what it does, and it replaces your file distribution, basically what Dropbox does. And it also adds three things to your workflow. The first one is safety, because you can always go back if something breaks and you have a good backup solution. Then it adds transparency. You always know basically who worked on what, so you don't need to add these things in the file name. You're adding the initials, adding the version number. That's defined by the source control system. And at the end, you have more control, as the name says, because you can select granularly which files will be uploaded to the central server and will be shared with your team and which files won't be uploaded. So it's not a continuous sync, basically. So let's see how it works. So this is basically the old way of working. You have a set of increments and you start your day by creating a new file, doing your changes, and then saving this as a new file again. So you save incrementally. A version control system does not work like this. So what you basically have is only the latest version here and all these other files are on the server. So you basically have a copy of the latest version on your computer and if you want to get other files back, you have to get them from the server. So when you work, you're doing your modifications and then you save over. Yes, you overwrite the file. The source control system detects that you made a change and publishing is basically uploading the file and the server will store this as a new version. And that's it on your side. You are in sync with the server. Your team member has also a copy of the latest version. But now he's one step behind because he was on version 2 here. He needs to get your version 3 and then simply override his latest file. And that's basically it. Now he is on the latest state. Let's say you want to restore a file. Let's say you want to restore to version 2. So you're doing basically the same procedure. You go to the server and say version 2 should now be the latest. And then this file gets downloaded and it will override your actual file. So for you now, the latest version here is version 2. And that's basically all how it works. So you can extend the source control system with file locking, for example, that you say, okay, let me block this file because I'm working on that and any other member cannot make any change and this will prevent conflicts. When it comes to practice, there are four source control solutions out there which are majorly used. The first one is Perforce, which is very popular amongst AAA games. Then there is Git, which is the most popular system among developers. There is Plastic, which is the newest and most flexible one. And there is also SVN, which is a bit old, but still in use for game development. So this is how it looks in practice. When you are in Unreal Engine, you notice the settings here for source control. You can click on that and say connect to source control. And then you have one of the four providers. So Subversion is SVN, we have Plastic, we have Git, and we have Perforce. So in that case, I would use normally Git. But because this one is a better version, it slows the application down a bit. So I definitely recommend when using Git, don't use really the integrated Git plugin for Unreal Engine. Use an external Git client. This is what we're going to do. We set 
this to none, we disable source control right now. And we use an external application called Anchor Point. And Anchor Point will deal all the Git things, basically all the versioning inside our Unreal Engine project folder. So right now I can see all the versions from my friends. So basically this is what I have modified. This is what Catherine has modified. I basically see the whole history and when she basically did the changes. And now I have zero uncommitted changes. So basically I have not modified any file. If I go to Unreal Engine right now, and let's say I make some modifications, I move these things around here and then just save the map. And now I just need to go to Anchor Point and it will detect the change that I modified the map. I don't need to tell it anything, it will do this automatically. And then I can add a comment what I have done. And then you just commit this. And committing is basically like publishing a new version. And this is becoming a new entry. And while pressing push, I'm uploading this to the central server. So Catherine has access to this version. And that's basically it. So instead of saving incrementally, I created a commit and uploaded it to the server. That's basically how Git works in a nutshell. All right, we are at the end of this video. I hope this gives you a good overview how source control basically works. And that you now understand what's basically happening with your files. Thank you for watching.